Hello everybody, my name is David Oaken, and today I'd like to show you a couple of neat things with my new camera framework called Lumina. Do you want to have a camera in your iOS application that's fully functional and gives you the ability to do whatever you want with audio and video? Do you want to be able to easily plug in a core machine learning model into your camera and do object recognition in just under five minutes with any iOS application? Well, if you want to do any of those things, Lumina is the framework for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate Lumina into your iOS project, how to get it started with a couple of lines of code, how to make the camera work on your phone or device. I'll show you also how to set up a Core ML model in order to be able to get it working in Lumina right away. And I'll show you some of the other features that it has. Let's go ahead and get started. All I've done here is I've made a simple iOS project from a single view application in Xcode. I've already used a dependency manager called Carthage to build my framework, though it's important to point out that aside from Carthage, you can also use CocoaPods if you'd like, or you can build the framework manually with the workspace that's available in my GitHub repo. So what we'll do, since we've already built the framework, is we'll go ahead and we'll go to the folder where the framework is built. I'll drag and drop it into the same folder as my project, and then I'll go ahead and drag it into my project navigator in Xcode. Since I've already copied the item to my project navigator and the right folder structure, I don't need to click copy items if needed, so I'll leave that unchecked. And I'll just hit finish. Now that it's in my local directory, I can go to the Xcode project file, and it should already be in linked frameworks and libraries at the bottom. Since it's a dynamically compiled framework, I need to click the plus button underneath embedded binaries and click on Lumina framework to add. Your project file should look like this when you're done. Once you scroll down to the bottom, you should see linked frameworks and libraries and embedded binaries with Lumina framework added. It's important to point out that since this is a camera application and it makes use of both the camera and the microphone, you'll need to update your plist to have permissions for both the camera and the microphone. This is what it looks like. You need to add these two lines in your info.plist file, privacy microphone usage description and privacy camera usage description. You just need to put strings in here that describe enough what it is that your application is doing with these particular permissions. At this point, you should be able to import Lumina into your view controller by typing import Lumina. In order to demonstrate how the camera works, we're going to add the view did appear function here, and we'll just override it. View did appear, animated. In order to get started, all you need to do is say let camera equals Lumina view controller. If all you need is to get the camera up and running, at this point you can do present camera true and nil here. You might not be able to get data back from the camera, but we'll show you here on the screen on my phone that this is all you need in order to get the camera up and running. It's fully functional on the device, but again, you're not going to have much of the functionality you need in terms of getting data back. We'll show you what that's like next. But if we look at our phone screen here, You'll see that as soon as view did appear runs, we get our request for permissions for the camera. We tap OK. We tap OK for the microphone. And now we're looking at our camera. And you can see everything here. We've got our shutter button for taking still images. We can focus anywhere we want on the screen. It handles rotation eloquently. And we have the ability to switch flash on as well. If we want to actually get data back from the delegate, we need to make sure that our view controller conforms to this delegate. So we'll type an extension at the bottom of view controller and we'll type Lumina delegate. All of the functions on Lumina delegate are optional. It's important to see what you have available to you here. We'll simply start typing a couple of those functions here. For instance, if I want to be able to cancel the camera and I want to be able to have the camera be dismissed whenever I tap the X button, I can type cancel here and it will say dismissed and this is the function for whenever I dismiss the camera. So I can say controller dismiss true and completion nil. In order to make this actually work, I need to type camera.delegate equals self. Now if I try to build this one more time, whenever I actually tap the X button on my screen, the camera will dismiss itself. Because I have this in view did appear, as soon as the controller appears again, it will try to present the camera again but that's expected behavior. So you can see here we've got our camera. I'll tap the X button and sure enough it works just fine. Let's go ahead and take a brief look at all the different functions you have available to in Lumina Delegate. 
You're able to see when a still image is captured and whether or not you're returning a live photo with it and depth data from that if your phone supports depth data. Depth data. You're also able to capture a video and that will be saved to a URL on your temporary directory on your device. You can also stream video frames by getting a UI image from each frame that is streamed. You would be able to do this if you wanted to stream video frames and get each of them as a UI image so that you can do post-processing on any image if you wanted to. You could also stream the video frames with CoreML predictions, which we'll go into next. Additionally, if you wanted to get depth data streamed from your iOS device, if your iOS device supports streaming that data, you could do that with this function. You could also detect metadata such as a QR code, barcode, or even the presence of a face with this function here. And lastly, you'd be able to see where you dismissed a controller. Now let's talk about CoreML and how you can use the features of Lumina for Core Machine Learning. Let's say you have a model that can take in an image and put out predictions of what is in that particular image. Lumina is the easiest way possible to see what those predictions are going to be, and I'll show you how to use that. You're going to want to have a model downloaded already. I have a couple of models that we can drag in. You can get these from the Apple website. I'll put that link in the, demo, in the description below. We have two models in this case. We'll use MobileNet and SqueezeNet. Once you add those to your directory of files where your application is, you can then add them into your project navigator. We'll go ahead and add these both by dragging them in here, right above Lumina Framework. And now we have access to them both. Make sure for each model that you use inside your application that the target is selected. So when you click on one of the ML model files, the target membership works with your application. So now let's say you wanted to pass all of the images that you're streaming from Lumina through your mobile net model. In order to do this, all you have to do is type camera streaming model types and pass in an array of all the types you want to stream it through. In this case, we can use mobile net and a constructor there. This should be all you need in order to start testing how Lumina works with Core ML. Now, it will do this on the inside, but we need to actually get some data out of it. So what I've done is I've copied and pasted a block of code that will show me how to use the text prompt on Lumina to show me what I'm getting out of that particular image. I need to implement another function on Lumina Delegate. And I need to make sure that I pick the one that gives me a tuple back of Lumina prediction in any type. We'll go over what the signature means in just a moment, but first let's actually implement the code that we're going to use. All we're doing here is we're making sure that we're in iOS 11 because CoreML does not work with iOS 10 or below. We're making sure we get the predictions back from our Lumina instance. And we're simply going to take the top result from each model that we've passed this through and post it as the text prompt on the controller. This should work for us right away. On my table, I have a remote control and a ballpoint pen, and MobileNet should be smart enough to be able to figure out the difference between the two. So we'll turn to the camera, and sure enough, it can tell that I'm looking at my remote, and now I'm looking at my ballpoint pen. This is really fast and a really efficient way to start playing with CoreML. But what if you want to play with multiple models? Well, we already added the SqueezeNet model to our particular model, and with the code we wrote, it handles the addition of multiple models to our text prompt on Lumina. In order to be able to test multiple models, all we need to do is add it to the array of streaming model types on Lumina. In this case, all we have to do is type comma SqueezeNet, and we're ready to go. We'll build the application again, and we'll look at both of them. Now that we have two models, our delegate code will simply pass the image through both of the models, and it will show on the text prompt on Lumina's screen what the most possible object is for both of those models. As we look here, both models are able to tell that I'm looking at a remote control, and now they're able to tell that I'm looking at a ballpoint pen. You can do this with as many models as you want in Lumina. It's important to point out that the more models you work with, the less performance you're going to get. Don't be surprised if Lumina runs a little bit slower if you're trying to use multiple different kinds of models. Lastly, let's show you some of the other functionality that you have. For instance, if I wanted to set the frame rate on my camera, I could type camera.framerate, and if I'm going to use the HD camera here, the 1080p camera that I have available on my iPhone 7, I could simply type camera.framerate is 60. And if we look at our camera, 
Sure enough, it's portraying the camera frame in 60 frames per second. There are going to be different settings available for different cameras that you have in different resolutions, so make sure you check what's available to you given the resolution you're setting. If you do want to try a different resolution, you can try all the different kinds that are available in Lumina by typing camera.resolution and you'll see an enum come up for all the different resolutions that you can choose. Since I have an iPhone 7, you can choose 4K resolution, and this is a good example because this will show you how you can get 4K resolution, but on the iPhone 7 Plus, 60 frames per second doesn't work with the 4K camera. It does with the later models, but you'll be able to see that even though we're setting the frame rate to 60, we'll not be able to get 30 frames per second because it's processing frames in 4K. So you notice we get the quality, but we don't quite get the frame rate. There are many other features available to you in Lumina. You could have things like capture live photos set to true. Depending on the resolution you use, this could work for you, and it would return a live photo URL along with your delegate function for getting a still image back. You could set the position, so if you wanted the position to be front when it loads, you can set that whenever you want. Amongst all the other different kinds of options you have, it's important to point out that you can change these on the fly whenever you want, and Lumina will respond accordingly to handle this. You can always get a handle on these particular variables, and you can set them whenever you want during the runtime of Lumina. I hope this was informative to you, and I can't wait for you to try it out. Please feel free to go to my GitHub repo and get started contributing if you'd like to help out with the vision of it. Thank you so much.